Okay, playing with the grown-up corn tool and cutter grinder a little bit here the last few days and um, making a little bit of progress on it. I'm doing it in my spare time type of thing, which I don't seem to have a whole lot of. But anyway, I lied to you guys because I originally said that I was going to draw all these up in by hand and I wasn't going to mess with CAD or CAM at all on these. These were a one-off thing. And I've kind of changed my tune a little bit because I got a 3D printer. So, and I've just been playing with it. This is the rocking lever in this drawing. Hopefully we can see it okay. I've got it all, all these on belly. And I've got the whole, I've got probably 90% of the drawings are drawn uh, by hand, which is what I originally set out to do. And this is a drawing for the rocking arms. And what I did just as kind of a trial was I printed out a set of these rocking arms. I went ahead and converted them in CAD. I'm using Fusion 360. And I went ahead drew them out, cammed them up, and I sent them to the 3D printer. And I'm basically going to use these as patterns, I think. Now, this is actually the two halves of the rocking levers themselves. And I've got to measure them out, print them to scale, and they'll still take a little bit of work if I'm going to use them as patterns. And I want to make sure they're scaled right. We've got some shrinkage allowance built into them and everything. So I will probably reprint these, and I'll print them differently. This is actually the rocking lever. got the cutouts in it. has the holes in the top and the holes through the center, which I won't do. I'll, I'll core this, so I'll build it. Um, I'll print another pattern if I use this system. Um, and I've still got to radius some edges, add some draft to them and everything. But I'll print this with a boss in it and um, so I can put a core in it. So it'll be, I'll still oversize it so I can machine it out to the inch and three eighths. That's what I believe the, the bore on those are. This was just kind of one of those um, things to do because I wanted to see how it'll do. Now there again, it doesn't have radiuses built in here and that. So there'll be quite a few changes to these. But these look really good. So I've got the two prints, the two halves. I printed them individually, and it takes a fair amount of time to print them. This one's already been relieved. I printed these with support, which were down on the print bed, and they actually just break out easily. So there's our uh, supports that come out, dispose of them. Same way on this side, they're there just to support that upper um, upper roof, which would be this part here. So anyway, that's what they are. They look really good. Like I say, I haven't measured them out yet to check dimensions on them, but that looks like it will make a at least the basis for a very nice pattern. So we'll see how that develops as time goes on. But I am on this project a little bit. So there's kind of an update. I've got um, some footage of this printing out, so we've, we're already running part of that, so you can watch that if you're so inclined. The other things about the corn, and this actually kind of relates to the original corn tool and cutter grinder. And you've seen my my grinder before, and I'll put a link to a couple of those videos up above so you can see them. But what um, I'm seeing a lot of guys start out on building a corn, and the uh, buzz right now is about the Mark III, which they're putting out the, the plans for and kits for, I believe, and a lot of adaptations to them and everything. That's all well and fine. If you're building a corn tool and cutter grinder, why you're going to end up and build that to fit your needs. The one thing I will say is I consider the corn a fairly advanced project, and it's a project that is never over. You're always going to be building things for that tool and cutter grinder if you're going to use it. And I will also say if you are after a tool and cutter grinder, and that's your main motivation is you want a tool and cutter grinder to be using in your shop, then you're spending a whole lot of time and effort on a project that may very well give you less than satisfactory results. The bottom line is you can go and buy a small tool and cutter grinder, whether it's a D-bit grinder or find a used tool and cutter grinder, something like that, and you will have less money invested in it and probably a much more capable machine for what you want to do in your home shop these days. And everybody has to make that decision. The corn is one of those projects that it is the end result in itself. Being able to use it in your shop is, is great, but that's a, to me, that's an added benefit. Um, the tool and cutter grinder itself is the journey along the way. And when I hear about guys, you know, they're going to McMaster handles, they're setting up for ER32 collets or ER20 collets or whatever the case may be that they think is going to suit them best, 
I think that's really a, a great way to go. Um, and I think there's a lot of upgrades that can be made to the corn, but it's a small machine, it's a fairly light duty machine, and it works well for resharpening what I consider to be disposable cutters in the shop. And, and it has, it's very versatile, it's very universal, and will do just about everything that you want to do in the shop, but it's slow and it's not a, not a easily set up machine for some setups. You know, there's some fiddling around with it, and repeatability if you're doing between different different sizes of end mills and things like that, if that's your main purpose for is to, to resharpen cutters like that. There's a lot of fiddling around that you're going to spend doing that. Um, I, I'm not trying to discourage anybody. I think it's a great little machine, but you need to know the limitations. Um, as far as lengthening out the, the bed rails, are you hurting it anything? No, other than you are taking it up an extra two or three inches of space in your shop, on a shelf, whatever, that, that is on an item that's not probably going to be used every day or even weekly type of thing. So everybody has to make the decision as to what it's going to be. Um, I've enjoyed building mine. Mine is still not done. You know, my original is still not done and will probably never be entirely done. Um, I was going to use it for something the other day and didn't have the right size call it set up for it so or tool holder set up for it so I ended up and did it a different way you know completed the job a different way because I didn't want to take the time at that point to to build tooling to to be finishing the job that I needed to get done so hopefully I'm not rambling along here but you just need to realize that um, the corn's a project in itself that's so going to take you quite some time and those are the bragging rights once you complete it is just to have completed the machine, not necessarily all the capabilities or not necessarily the usefulness that you might like to have out of that machine once it's completed and in your shop and in use. So um, just things to, to keep in mind, you know, same way with using things like uh, pre-made handles rather than taking the time to turn the ball handles. That's, that's part of the bragging rights is all these fancy little ball handles that are set out on your you know, on your machine and are oriented that way. So anyway, I've rambled long enough. I just wanted to show you the updates and, and kind of the direction I'm going with my uh, grown-up tool and cutter grinder. So hopefully you're finding something at least a little bit interesting or some food for thought. And uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.